The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And, uh, oh, what do we have here today? Well, another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we've got the S&P up two and a half, the Dow's up 18, the Nasdaq's up 20. And we'll get to what we talked about yesterday uh, about high shorting. And we'll take a look at that once again. But uh, when everybody gets on one side of the boat, pretty good indication that you're going to find some lows. We'll talk about, uh, about that. We've got... Uh, a lot of other stuff to talk about. We'll look at some stuff. But uh, I think we've made our lows uh, for the rest of the year. Of course, today is the day that they go delta neutral. They've been selling a ton of puts over the last few days, which makes you think that they think that this uh, market will close at least at this level or not higher going into expiration a week from Friday. Uh, and we'll take a look at some other stuff, but we'll look at one of the best textbook uh, patterns uh, that we've ever seen. We talked about it yesterday, so we'll go through what we see today out here. But uh, I'm going to give you a little indication here, as we said yesterday, that you're normally within about one day of a low when everybody and their dog decides they've got to go shorting. So we'll talk about that. Anyway, uh, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, uh, you can always put a message in the tiger den. And, uh, well, let's get started. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On today, the uh, biggest loss of life in a single explosion uh, happened with... Uh, well, I guess not. Yeah, I guess you'd have to call it an explosion. 9-11 was a plane crash. So, yeah, uh, the biggest explosion of all time killed 1,600 people and injured approximately 8,000 in 1917. It was a Belgian steamer and a French uh, freighter, uh, both uh, trying to get in and out a fairly narrow inlet. Uh, if you've ever been to Halifax up in Canada, beautiful place. Um, but um, the Belgian steamer uh, loaded absolutely to the gills and all over the deck with uh, all kinds of things to make uh, things go bang. Uh, and a un uh, on a, and a unloaded uh, French steamer uh, tried to get through a fairly narrow area. Uh, of course, uh, the Germans were rather happy with uh, what they could do with their submarines. And the submarines could actually get all the way over there to Canada, so they had uh, submarine nets. And they only opened these nets for a very short amount of time, so everybody had to race in and out. Well, uh, this Belgian steamer was getting in ready to go uh, over to uh, Europe and uh, loaded with 8 million tons of TNT. Uh, a, that's in very secure uh, and a specially designed ship to hold them. Uh, but what they decided to do is put all kinds of chemicals on the deck in 55 gallon drums uh, to make additional uh, bullets and uh, ammunition. Uh, actually, uh, what would you call it? Gunpowder when they got there. So these uh, 55 gallon drums full of stuff uh, stacked another 25 feet on the deck of the ship. Uh, and uh, one ship hit the other because they both uh, turned off their engines and then glided into each other. Uh, of course, 1917, not a lot of people, uh, a lot of boats uh, had uh, decent radios, certainly not uh, voice radios. It would be Morse code. Uh, both of them continued to uh, honk their horns uh, twice, which said, hey, I'm not moving, and the other one's not moving. 
probably not a great thing to do with two big ships, one of them loaded with 8 million tons. This is what we're talking about, 8 million tons. That was just a hair under the uh, size of the explosion in Hiroshima. So uh, anyway, uh, the one boat hits the other one, knocks off a few of these barrels. These things start getting hot they start cooking off and they would fire uh, two or 3,000 feet in the air and then come back down, hit the decks and actually penetrate the specially designed places where all the TNT was covered. Uh, anyway, when one came down there, it hit with enough force to, to uh, set off all the TNT at once. Uh, and uh, you ended up with 1,600 people dead, 8,000 uh, injured an entire town for two and a half miles in every direction leveled. It actually, because of that small inlet, caused a tsunami that wiped out a uh, giant uh, arms manufacturing plant uh, and wiped out a bunch of people down the uh, down the way. They didn't even count those in the in that a school that was a mile away uh, of the 500 kids, 490. Uh, were instantly dead. Another five died the next few days. Only five out of the 500 lived. And uh, this was the beginning of uh, when people actually started to pay attention uh, to what they were hauling. A lot more regulations came. But uh, we started to see what the power of explosives would do on this day in 1917 when something just minutely short of a nuclear weapon went off in Halifax. They found the anchor of one ship three miles away. But uh, that's it. Yep. It happens over and over in history. Uh, uh, Dano in the Den says uh, they did it again with the Texas City, uh, Texas gas uh, thing. But uh, yeah, it's uh, over and over. You find people uh, eventually will uh, start treating uh, explosives without the care that they deserve. Uh, and uh, we've learned a little bit, but uh, it still happens from time to time. Uh, I had some questions, see if I have enough time. I'll get started here. i got a minute and a half, then we'll talk about this, and we'll get to charts and other things that we're talking about uh, today. Uh, but I had a question about What's the big deal about OLED and LED television screens, and how does it apply to what uh, Apple and Samsung do? And you know, like I said, I wouldn't got that much time left in this segment, but we'll, we'll start off here. And that is, of course, LEDs have been around forever. But one of the problems with making LEDs um, screens, especially for smartphones and TVs, is that they take up a lot of layers to make. Uh, you have to start actually with a layer that actually just prov uh, provides light. And that's a big deal. And one of the reasons why is it's always got to provide light. You can't dim it. The actual other layers in there kind of act like a shutter on a camera uh, where you can reduce the amount of light. If you remember, you used to turn the little uh, ring on the camera and the uh, aperture would get smaller and let less light in. Um, that's kind of what these LEDs do. They've got uh, several layers, one for red, green, and blue. But you've always got to be producing that light. We'll talk more about this when we come back. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. And uh, we'll, uh, eh, we'll get back to this here. Um, LEDs, uh, people have been asking me, should I buy an LED and an OLED television, or does it really matter for smartphones? And the big, of course, thing with smartphones is uh, battery life. And if you don't always have to have uh, at least one level of the LEDs on that's basically always 100%, uh, producing as much light as it can. The OLEDs that actually generate their own light per pixel means that uh, only when you're showing something is there power. But if you want to go to a black screen and not turn the screen off, LEDs always have to have what you won't see behind it, which is that uh, lit back screen. So OLEDs, organic light emitting diodes, have much better contrast because literally you can turn everything off on each individual pixel. There's always a little bit of light that leaks through LEDs, so the contrast isn't, isn't as good. So LEDs, uh, less expensive, but uh, use more power. Uh, organic LEDs, more expensive, but suffer from burn-in. So if you're buying one of these OLEDs and you leave it on something like uh, the news channel all day, you will eventually start to see that burn in. So if you're watching movies, that kind of stuff, big uh, screen 70-inch OLED, not uh, such a bad choice. If you're watching CNBC all day long, probably, and watching the ticker down below, you're probably going to get burn in. You don't like that. Uh, of course, it's more expensive, too. So uh, everybody pretty much wants to get a new Samsung or a new uh, iPhone 10. But uh, the battery life is going to be exceedingly better if you use it a lot. And that's pretty much why people are going after it. But that's, uh, that's why OLED is the hot thing. But it does suffer from a couple of issues. One, of course, more expensive into it burns in so just be careful when you're using them uh, they are working hard at uh, getting rid of the burn-in problem but they have not solved it yet 
Uh, just don't leave it on the same channel forever. Yep, they look beautiful. And, of course, that's because you get so much uh, more contrast and you get so much more color. Actually, it just kind of looks like the color's dripping out of the screen uh, on those compared to the LEDs, uh, which, of course, oh, I forgot to say, much since you basically have six layers and an LED screen, always much thicker. And, of course, Apple's all about making one of these things as thin as a uh, credit card. I don't know if they'll ever get there, but uh, OLEDs make everything a great deal thinner than LEDs. Yep, great for movies and TV shows. Not so good for watching the same news station all day long, though. Okay, so what else do we have uh, happening out here? We wanted, oh, wanted to get to it. Yesterday we talked about how huge short interest in a particular stock was a good sign that a bottom was coming in. Uh, we talked about how Intel... Uh, normally had about a 10 or 11 percent short uh, sale ratio each day. Uh, yesterday we had, uh, or as we got into, yeah, yesterday there was 20 percent, or the day before, 20 percent the day before, uh, where normally you have about 10 percent. Anytime you see everybody deciding to get on one side of the boat, uh, generally within about 24 hours you see these things turn around. And that's kind of what you saw with Intel making one of the best looking chart patterns out here that I love, which is you gap up on 90 million shares back on the 27th of October. You come back into it with uh, 30 million shares yesterday, but just 14 million shares today. You fill about half the gap down to 42.67 and you get the reversal. Now, does this mean it's going right back up to 47? No. But if you were interested in a stock that has high short interest and the ability to turn around and some level of safety, because a lot of people are in this and uh, big names on Wall Street, fairly interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, other stocks of interest uh, that probably had some fairly decent looking bottoms out here are Advanced Micro. Uh, this one had a 140 million share low on May 3rd. At uh, nine dollars and eighty-five cents, got to nine dollars and seventy cents with uh, sixty. Yeah, let's call it sixty-seven million shares. Uh, up a little bit up today on thirty-one million shares. Again, these things don't instantly bounce, uh, but if you are playing or watching some of these stocks with high short interest, it's certainly uh, you want to keep an eye on them. Hang on, let's see what AMD had for short interest yesterday, last couple of days. Okay, so yeah, it was moderate. That's kind of why I thought uh, Intel would probably bounce a little better than AMD. It's pretty standard, 16%, 17% every day on AMD. Uh, AMD's story is not that good. Also, Qualcomm, uh, who's also, of course, uh, in a rumored buyout, uh, a little pop better up here. But they're coming out with chips that actually compete directly with AMD. So right now, um, if you're interested in playing chip companies, Qualcomm from the buyout, but uh, more than likely, if you're looking at uh, existing companies like Intel versus AMD, I would probably sit in the Intel camp. Um, INTC. Just uh, a lot of new um, laptops coming out right after the first of the year are going to be using the new Snapdragon chip uh, that uh, Qualcomm makes. And they've kind of gotten away from using Intel's uh, bottom line chip, uh, but also uh, avoiding uh, AMD's chip altogether too. And uh, yeah, there's a few reasons why. Uh, we're back to Intel on there, but uh, uh, pretty good articles out the last few days about why uh, Intel is really starting to make a lot of cash uh, a lot of the other companies like AMD have pushed to go to smaller and smaller dies uh, for the product, which is normally a good thing. Uh, the downside is Intel has kind of held back on that, and the problem is yield. Uh, AMD, uh, even some of the other manufacturers at Taiwan Semiconductor have had a real problem with getting yield up. Uh, you can make a lot of things cheap, but if half of them don't work, uh, your cost is just doubled. Uh, Intel avoided going uh, too quickly to 10 uh, nanometer technology. I was kind of worried at the time that they were falling behind. 
uh, they were actually probably sitting behind some spreadsheet that said, if we go too soon, our costs are going to be too high because the yield will be low. And uh, they were right. AMD, Taiwan Semiconductor, uh, all having some issues with yield in the smaller dyes. Eventually, they'll get that settled out. But uh, they would have been better off probably staying with better technology uh, that got higher yields instead of throwing a lot of product away. So uh, that's my you know, dollars and cents on that. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. But uh, today would be a good day for a phone call. We'll look at a lot of other charts uh, very interesting chart patterns. We'll go through some of the ones I had in, in the newsletter today. Uh, we'll look at uh, some others also. But uh, we'll, uh, more than willing to take your call or put a stock that you want. We'll be back in just a second. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, we'll look at a few out here that are moving. Uh, U.S. Steel um, doing a little bit better today. Uh, come on, let's bring it up here. Why are we doing going so slow today? 
do not know. Come on. There we go. A nice little pop uh, to where we have it at there. Uh, U.S. Steel, AK Steel, both uh, up nicely following uh, the uh, Commerce Department's move to impose import duties on steel from Vietnam that originated in China. Uh, we already went and put them on, uh, put uh, 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 additional taxes on the China steel, but of course uh, they just moved it to China and shipped it from them. Uh, so now we're uh, going after China, uh, Vietnam also. Um, this is probably about as sweet as it gets. Uh, uh, April 25th, 3209 with 35 million shares. Got into it today with uh, 15 million shares. Didn't quite hold it. So, you know, there's a lot of resistance above this uh, as we go back higher. Uh, there's some very big down days into this. And of course, we're just filling this gap that uh, came down on 101 million shares back on April 26. So uh, not going to be surprised to find some people that are dying to get their cash back that had been in this for a while and uh, kissing the ground and uh, saying, isn't it a beautiful day uh, to, to, to let's see if there's anything else in the news I wanted to talk about. Da, 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 da. Uh, one of the bigger short sellers out here is whoop, uh, talking about uh, OSI, which is OSI Systems. Uh, one of the short sellers, well, we saw them go after Roku uh, late last week, but we've got another one. This is Muddy Waters uh, going after and call, a company calling the company rotten to the core. Rotten, rotten, rotten. Um, basically saying that they paid off a lot of people uh, in a turnkey contract in Mexico and things probably shouldn't do so well. I don't know why I'm having problems with this one. Uh, oh, because I didn't actually type the, all the ticker in here. That's why. Um, there we are. OSI Systems, probably the uh, one that uh, deserves uh, getting the uh, loser horn of the day. <laughs> And, of course, these guys, uh, they kind of like the equivalent of the uh, birds that uh, peck on the uh, dead flesh of animals. They do a, uh, a job by picking out and showing out uh, which of these stocks are probably at least a little shady, if not fraudulent. But uh, kind of interesting in that. Uh, earlier in the day, the EIA petroleum uh, indexes came out. They were down 5.6 million barrels versus the 3.4 million barrels uh, for the consensus, uh, consensus. And what it was last week, they've been heading lower. Well, let's see what the last uh, tick on crude was down. Buck 55 at 56.07 is what I have. Gold's up uh, two bucks. Uh, silver's off six cents. Um, Actually, a handful of those gold stocks starting to look kind of interesting, but we shall see. Uh, no turnaround signal today in gold, but uh, kind of come close. Uh, let's take a look at some others out here. Of course, uh, we had AutoZone yesterday. Uh, Advanced Auto Parts um, had come and filled its gap. That was uh, almost 20 million shares for August 15th, when this gap down, it's coming and filling these. I got into it with 2.46 uh, million shares yesterday and rotated down. Not a lot of volume today, and this is where you get a lot of these stocks that just start hitting the ceiling. They're not going to pull back that far, uh, but you're not going to get a lot of juice in the next two, three weeks before the beginning of the year. What you want to watch is see how well these things can hold up. And if they just go up with no volume, you want to see these things kind of pull back on light volume, setting up a first of the year move. Akamai, of course, this one blew up on earnings uh, several months ago. It's coming back into uh, its uh, resistance levels. I think it did okay on earnings back here on October 25th. Uh, but uh, and it was up on 10 million shares there, uh, up uh, on 4.3 million shares just a few days ago. But this all is uh, filling this gap down on May 3rd uh, on 15 million shares, and you really just haven't got there. Again, if you're thinking about shorting some of these stocks with open gaps, uh, same rule applies that I like, which is it fills half the gap. On the case of Intel, it filled that gap. 
uh, with incredibly light volume, uh, but filled half of the existing gap left. Uh, this one would need to get up to about 59 bucks if I was thinking about shorting it. Maybe it gets there at the very beginning of the year or something. Uh, some of these stocks that hadn't been doing well in the video game industry also uh, making at least some lows now. Uh, Electronic Arts has done fairly well. Uh, what I dislike about this one is it did come off of the October 31st high with some juice. It's filled it. It's probably not going down any lower between now and the first of the year. Uh, but uh, a lot of these uh, video game companies did not really bring their A game with new games for Christmas. So these things are going to probably be uh, lukewarm for a while. The downside is that they do try to get all these games released somewhere around Christmas so the parents will buy them uh, for not only the Xbox type stuff, but for the PC because it's uh, actually a big part of the business anymore. But uh, we'll take a look at it. But it's uh, this and a handful of Activision. What is that? AVTI. Both of these things kind of look like they've topped out for a while. There's an ATVI. I think it's ATVI, Activision. Makes more sense, doesn't it? ATVI. There we go. Um, this one's kind of doing the same thing, and it uh, got into the lows yesterday, but it's come up a little bit. I still don't suspect that this thing's probably going to get much higher uh, into Christmas, maybe 62, 62 and a half. Uh, it's going to start running into resistance. I don't see how those things actually change much. Uh, S bucks, Starbucks. Um, I don't drink coffee, maybe once a year. Uh, I've already had it for this year. Uh, this one, very disappointing earnings uh, back on the 28th of July, did so with uh, 50, and let's call it 54 million shares. Uh, last three days as we've gone back up through that, 13.3 million shares, 11.2 million shares, and 5 million shares today with a little doji. Uh, I haven't paid any attention. I've got to probably ask Andy about coffee and whether or not we can expect uh, coffee to go through the roof again. Uh, Starbucks kind of looks to me like one of those things that yeah, maybe people are starting to get a little worn out on. It uh, doesn't have quite the problems that CMG does. But at the same time, it uh, seems kind of overexposed for what it is. Uh, CMG, of course, yesterday had, uh, and the day before had some kind of nice days for the beleaguered stock um, in comparison to what it could have been. Uh, but again, this is another one you fill about half of what the existing gap left is. And you want to think, man, it's an awful good time if I've been long this thing to ring the register. Uh, we're pretty sure that this thing would get to 308, got to 333 for that brief second, and it's kind of pulled back down in here. Again, huge short interest. We'll talk about that when we come back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, check my mail just real quick. Uh, question about uh, what's coming up. For earnings after the bell tonight, uh, one is Lulu, of course, Lulu Lemon. Um, retail's been hot. You got to think that if this thing has any kind of de uh, decent earnings, that it's going to get back up into this big gap down. That would be about 72.50. If it whiffs, uh, 56, 56 is the last low back here in a gap. But uh, my guess is that uh, all these things have been doing a little bit better. Uh, I would worry that uh, the pop would be to 72.50 on that one. Uh, we also have a Vago. Uh, of course, it's trying to buy out uh, Qualcomm. Uh, this one, I think a lot of people were worried they're going to make a bid way too expensive for them. Uh, but uh, what is it? Got a PE already in the 60s. So uh, it can't borrow enough money. Uh, down on heavy volume off this last high at 285.65. Uh, I don't know if this thing's going to re respond to earnings as much as uh, asking exactly how much they're going to pay for Qualcomm and what that's going to do to them uh, over the time. But uh, look for uh, probably at least a little news about what they plan to do with Qualcomm. Uh, they've been quiet over the last uh, seven, ten days. They've been working on their board so that uh, they can, uh, when they take over, that Qualcomm wouldn't be able to get any seats. So it looks like it's going to be a rather aggressive courtship over the next few days. But after the bell tonight, they do report. Uh, do, 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 what did I have? Anything else? Uh, Workday. Um, got a question on whether or not I would be a buyer on this one. And the answer is you're almost there. I want that $92 level uh, that came in. There's a little, there's a gap where this thing came up on 3.8 million shares back on the 15th of March. Uh, you kind of hit that candle today, uh, but uh, or yesterday, excuse me. But that was on almost the same amount of juice. So you're going to get that bounce. Uh, I would still hope that you get the opportunity to buy that thing back in the. Uh, 92 area, um, and hopefully maybe even at that gap at 91.50. So I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, to, to, to wanted to look at a few other stocks out here today. Vertex Pharmaceuticals uh, was making a fairly decent low out here. Now there's a lot of these stocks that have pulled back and have started to really come back on much lighter volume. Vertex uh, ripped them a new one on the 19th of July, did so on 16.8 million shares. That pretty much was the high in the next few days. It's been slowly working its way back and filling that gap. 
Last time it filled it with 3.7 million shares on October 26, down to 139.05. We got to 136.83 uh, today on 800,000 shares so far. So you're getting back into the filling that gap. Normally you'll pull back, you'll start to rally, you'll leave a, a gap and you wanna fill about half that. Maybe we're one day away from that. Uh, and if you're thinking about the IBB or those, I'm thinking, oh, one too many Bs. Let me try that again here. Um, both of these kind of lining up that way. You finally started getting some fairly light volume uh, in the biotechs, uh, but you probably want to see 100 and eh, 100 and change these two previous lows. This is still a sector that's under a little bit of sales, uh, a cloud, let me put it that way. So you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, we go in tomorrow morning. We've got a Dollar General reporting. Uh, these things have been hot. Um, I don't see any reason why this thing would pull back unless they've got some problems with their balance sheet. Uh, still looks rather good. Uh, they broke out, really have never stopped. Uh, next high for this one would be 95.60, which is the July 27th, 2016th high. This thing kind of went already, filled the entire gap, so you're going to have a little bit more uh, resistance, but... Uh, you know, if this thing would probably pull back a little bit, probably make uh, a nice little ABC up to 95.60 and not too far. Let's see if there's anything else out here. Sienna, also in the morning. Let's see if there's anything else out here that really moved the markets. I don't think so. Uh, Sienna, uh, there's a little gap up here at about 23.50. That's where you would take your money if you're long this thing. Uh, the downside is if this thing whiffs, you're back down to $19.40. So probably not a lot of risk reward to go on that one. Uh, if you're looking, still thinking the market's headed lower, um, there's a handful of stocks that look like maybe uh, they are a lot weaker. Uh, I joked uh, after the last election uh, about uh, the president at that time being the single best gun salesman ever known to man. And once he's gone, of course, uh, not so much anymore. Uh, this thing has gapped down, uh, gapped down a great deal on the 3rd of uh, August this year with, uh, no, let's call it 900,000 shares. Had a huge one-day rally back on September 19th, kind of pulled back up. It's back up into this uh, area now. But a couple of these gun companies are now uh, have gone and had so much expansion to make up for that. They can't make money now in the lower amount of gun sales. Occasionally, they have a handful of days where everything is huge. I think on Black Friday, they had huge gun sales. But for the most part, the massive amount of, arm of, of uh, uh, ammo and gun sales is dramatically uh, turning down in these businesses and a handful of them are already filing for bankruptcy. You want to watch very closely on these because uh, it just wasn't what it was before. So you got to kind of have to keep an eye on that. Uh, as I said yesterday, I'm highlighting uh, the ability to, or the uh, reporting of uh, all the work I've done on short sales. Uh, one of the reasons I hadn't done it up to this point was it took an uh, enormous amount of time to copy all the data and get it. Uh, I actually wrote something that just creates a spread spreadsheet so I can click one button. It pops it into my uh, daily uh, newsletter. And we've got a lot of that uh, data now in each of the daily newsletters. But um, here it is if you want to take a look at it. But uh, yesterday, you really want to watch for these stocks that have huge pops. Uh, and of course, uh, Intel was the one that we were talking about yesterday, where it went, uh, if you see my little cursor here, where it went on the first from 11% uh, to 22% in one day. Uh, normally within a day or about 24 hours, sometimes two days, uh, you see a fairly significant low. Uh, whether it is people trying to force the last amount of people out of a stock or the shorts who just can't 
help but short at the wrong time. Who knows? But uh, high volume lows with high uh, levels of shorting tend to be a fairly good indicator that uh, you found a at least a short term, if not a mid term bottom. We'll be back after this break. We'll wrap up the show. Of course, uh, it is Wednesday, so we've got Tom O'Brien for the next two hours. And we'll be back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Come join me next hour as we bisect and dissect these markets right here on TFNN. Wow! And we're back. Um, question in the email about Snap. Do I still think uh, that you could see 1688 or higher? And the answer is yes. And not surprising, a little pullback out here. But... Uh, Man, it's still got a monster amount of shorts uh, that are always sitting on top of this. And uh, that doesn't seem to change no matter what day you come in. Uh, yesterday on that bounce, uh, you still had 23% uh, people shorting, which is kind of in line. So uh, when they quit shorting, I'll let you know. But my guess is that they're going to continue to short the stock and cover slightly higher prices uh, into the end of the year. Uh, to, to, to what else did we have? Uh, looked at a few other things out here. Um, Starbucks. Did we talk about that? Can't remember what we're talking about. Um, I think I brought it up with Andy. Man, this one looks very nervous up here with two little dojis. But uh, retail's not doing that 
bad. We talked about Vertex. Uh, talked about uh, that. What else do we have? Uh, talk about Nova Gold here. Uh, interesting chart in some of these golds. Um, no answer for you today other than it did break through the previous low of May 31st. $3 and 78 cents. Uh, that was uh, with 2.6 million shares. But uh, like I said, a lot of these stocks, especially um, gold stocks, love to wash everybody out. I love the pattern with light volume on the way back down, uh, but uh, you need really close back above $3 and 78 cents uh, to uh, confirm a buy signal on this. But certainly the volume is not picking up compared to these previous lows of 2.6 million shares. So uh, today, 1.3 million shares. If you're long, you're not going to be happy. But uh, you kind of need to wait for a little bit more reversal. Maybe we get that in the next day or two. But uh, certainly we don't have a lot of volume in the blowout on that one. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same back channel, same back uh Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.